Hello everybody, it is Casey here with my blog, Mountain Cove Home and Family, and my small business, Mountain Cove Market. I am at my studio slash shop here in the Ozarks, right outside of Forsyth, Missouri. And I am so excited to be back doing a video with you on selling furniture on Etsy and shipping. And so that's what we are going to touch on today. Um, so I have a paper here that I've written out and I've written down some of the questions that you guys have sent me in regards to selling furniture on Etsy and, you know, overcoming the challenge of shipping the furniture and just some of the um, kind of like details that you guys want to know. And so if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, you can email them to me at Casey at Mountain Cove Home and Family .com. You could send them to my blogs or my small business Facebook page, like message me there. So here are um, some of the questions. I'm, I'm going to read through them. Some of them have been touched on other videos, but we'll just do a little recap on them. So where first question is, where do I find shippers? So that has been covered in other videos. I typically get my shippers from UShip. I've also met through going through the UShip process two private shippers that I now use on a pretty regular basis. And so about half the time now I use UShip and the other half time shipping, I use private shippers. The next one, next question is, in calculating the cost of shipping supplies, do we get the blankets back? Which was kind of a cute question. And so if some of you are wondering what that means, when we pack furniture, so say this is a dresser or an armoire, then we will, and I have like, if you're interested in how we pack furniture, I have some, a couple of YouTube videos up on that, but we will, um, I have a little black wax on my fingers I've been painting, so sorry that <laughs> they're, they look dirty, they're clean, but I still have black wax on them from working today. Um, so we will take a piece of furniture, like an armoire, hutch that's the most types of furniture that we sell but really anything is how we would pack it when we ship with private shippers and so we wouldn't if we ship something through fedex or ups or like on a big freight we would never pack this way we would all we would pack much differently but i try to avoid that at all costs because the damage rate is so high um so and you can all you can't ship great big furniture on fedex or ups and on freight it's just, I just want to avoid that. I'm not into creating all my furniture and all of that. I'm not at that point. And I really am happy with the private shippers we've been using and the blanket wrap method, which is like a method you would choose on you ship, or it's a method that I choose. And so, but what we do is we double bubble wrap it in um, commercial grade, uh, my mind just went blank. We bubble wrap it in commercial grade bubble wrap. And then we have four blankets, like they are shipping blankets, packing blankets. So they're similar, they're the gray blankets that um, you would find like on UP or not UPS, U-Haul. Um, so the types of blankets, if you ever gotten blankets through U-Haul, it's those gray blankets and those can be ordered we order them like by the bundle load. We get 25 or 30 at a time, something like that. And they just come to oh, a few dollars a piece, three or four dollars a piece. So we'll use four blankets on an armoire and then we'll shrink wrap that. So it's bubble wrapped and then blanket wrapped and then shrink wrapped. And so we, when we send those pieces off, we do not get the supplies back. We don't get the blankets back. And I calculate my shipping cost into the price of the item and I calculate the shipping prices into the price of the item. And then before I list it, and I'm gonna go a step further and also say that I also calculate my Etsy fees into the price of an item. So when I sit down to make an Etsy listing, cause I've heard a lot of people say, I don't know if I wanna do Etsy cause the, you know, they take out almost 10%. So they do take out a total of 8%. And that's between a transaction fee and just their fee that they have. And so what I do, if I have 
say this is an armoire, then I will sit down before I make a listing. I will go through and I will do my shipping estimate on UShip. And so to get an idea of how much it's gonna cost me to ship, I'll enter in the weight and the dimensions. And again, I've covered like how to determine weight and dimensions on um, other videos. This was a question somebody had, so I'll touch on it in a, in a little bit. But uh, I'll put in the weight and the dimensions approximate, so I'm estimating of an item. And then, I, so I'm in Missouri, and I will put the farthest away destination that it can go for me in the United States. And that would be like somewhere in the very northwest, like Seattle or beyond, and somewhere in the very northeast, like, oh, beyond, like Maryland, beyond up to Maine. And I'll get an average of between those. So if somebody orders, from one of those places from me, I know that I'll be covered if I estimate in that, like in that range. So if you ship gives me an estimate of $500 to ship an item, I am automatically, especially now, now shipping has, um, there are so many delays in shipping. Shippers are extremely busy. The prices have gone up, gas prices have gone up. People are ordering a ton more online. A shipper told me in the past couple of weeks that um, shipping is backed up five to six weeks. And so it's taken longer for items to be shipped. And it's also costing a lot more. It's costing not double but about one and a half times at least it is i have experienced that from what it was now here in the beginning of may than what it was at the beginning of this year in january and even like last fall and last summer shipping has gone up significantly and so if you ship gives me an average price of shipping an item at say the average price is 500 dollars, i'm going to say my shipping cost is going to be 700 dollars. that's going to include like I'm paying more than average right now, like to get somebody to take my bid, I'm paying probably $150, 100, at least $100 more, probably $150 more than what UShip has given me as the average price. Um, and then I'm also gonna have my UShip fees, so you can play with that, see what your UShip fees are gonna be. Sometimes mine are around like $60, $67. And then the cost, then I'll also figure in, add the cost of my shipping supplies, which I usually estimate to be around $50. So let's say then that I have, um, the item has cost me say $100, say Armour's cost me $100, and then I'm gonna have $200 in shipping costs, so that's, or 200 let's say $700 in shipping costs and then $50 for um, packing supplies and then so that's $850 I'll add like another I'll add a $20 brush fee I'll go ahead and add um, the cost of my paint supplies so by the time we're done with all of that we're pretty close to $950 for the Etsy fees like I We'll figure out what the fees are. So the Etsy fees, how much it's gonna cost me to ship. And you don't know your Etsy fees until you begin setting a price on it. So I'm like, if I want to price this it, so that my average price for of the pieces that I've sold, so I've sold eight pieces this year. And on eight pieces this year, I've made $19,500. And so that's the revenue that came in from Etsy. And then I would have to subtract, and I'll cover that in a little bit, how much, um, you know, like what my costs were and stuff and expenses, I would have to subtract that. But it's still a really good profit, and that's just been doing, I'll cover it more later, but that's really part-time on Etsy and selling and shipping part-time with Etsy because I've been super, super busy getting my shop ready and this is what I've been doing three quarters of the time. So to make almost $20,000 in four months part-time, even when I take away, if I took away the cost of all my supplies and my inventory, the expenses on shipping, I'm just guesstimating that probably a good guess would be, I probably come out with a profit of about 
owe $13,000. And so that's a pretty good profit for just four months time and working part time. And so out of $19,500, after all my fees, after shipping product supplies, everything, I'm probably at a profit of about $13,000. It might even be, I'm kind of guessing low on that because I don't want to say something that it's not, but it, I would say it's that as a minimum or higher. And so I figure in all of those costs and then I will say, okay, so all of my fees and everything is gonna be a little over a thousand dollars, but I have this armoire and then anything after a thousand dollars is going to be profit for me. So I've spent three, four days painting it, I mean, however long it took, unless I'm doing a super, super, super elaborate one, I can, I could really get done a couple of week or you know or honestly more than that if i push myself and like did it completely full time but um so i would price it at around 24 2500 dollars sometimes two thousand dollars just really depends on the item um and then that would give me a profit of any depend on how much i priced it anywhere from a thousand to fourteen hundred dollars and that's been per item and that's been the norm for me so for people to say you can't really make money because they charge so much i'll just say that's not my experience that you know i have been able to make it money and so i've been starting out i started out painting spindle chairs on my kitchen table and filling up my garage with furniture and painting in the backyard and just to let you know like let me just kind of walk you around a little bit so we've been able to go from that to move into almost a 3500 square foot shop almost 3000 square foot shop sorry and studio which were open on thursdays through saturdays to the local public and the rest of the time um, I am in here working on furniture so we have a, a great space to work in a good space to you know make some just connections with our community in a new and different way so here's pieces some new pieces back here that we've gotten in and so all of that in two years time, like I started doing this about two, two and, about two and a half years ago. And just from starting out, I'm a kid, you know, painting chairs, spindle chairs like this on my kitchen table, just like this right here. And so if you're thinking, well, I don't have a shop, I don't have, I didn't either. And so I just hope that that is helpful for you or inspiring for you you know that I understand that um, it can be rough when you start out but I just want you to know that it was frustrating for me for the, a little over the first year because we make over this furniture and we think it's beautiful and we got a lot of hours in it and it's high quality furniture and then but then finding ways and means to sell it sorry i just wanted to adjust this um finding ways and means to sell it is the next challenge to where this can transform from a hobby to a business and so i think that that is where some of you guys are at you know like how do i transform from a hobby to a business and I've just taken those steps. I have not got it all figured out. I am not an expert on it, but I have learned from experience just, you know, how to do little things at a time that's helped us to grow slow and steady in the past two years and to look for opportunities, take advantage of them. And that's what selling furniture that I redesign um, on Etsy has done for me and I don't have I'm a seller on Etsy but I have no affiliation with them other than just being a seller and so 
that was a long way to say, no, we do not get the blankets back. <laughs> oh gosh, talk about Wendy. So, but I wanted, I did want to address that. If you guys are thinking, if you get overwhelmed, like, oh my goodness, like the cost of supplies, the cost of shipping, the cost of all of that, you know, like how would I, the Etsy fees, how would I ever make money? I'm telling you, I make money. And I look on, so I'm in Missouri, and I'll say this, I offer free shipping because I live in Missouri. I have a, I was talking to a couple of people about this, and they're furniture artists, and one lives on the East Coast, and one lives on the West Coast. And so I have a geographical benefit over them because the furthest away that I'm gonna ship furniture is halfway across the country. But somebody that lives in Seattle, or California or Florida or Maine or you know, South Carolina, you know, the furthest away they're gonna ship furniture is all the way across the country. I mean, potentially if they open up to that. So I would say that if I, I offer free shipping because I have, I mean, I still can ship furniture. You know, there's places that's almost 2,000 miles. There are 2,000 miles away from me. And so I still ship them very far away, but it's not the same as shipping all the way across the country. That definitely changes your shipping cost. And so if I lived in that type of geographical location, I probably, I would, don't think I would offer free shipping. I would ask people to contact me for a quote. And then that way you can give them a quote because I just think that your cost, what you would have to put would be too high maybe to attract that many buyers. And so you might just look around and see, but I will tell you this, there are people who are selling furniture that they redesign on Etsy who are very, 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 very successful and they are living on the East Coast and on the West Coast. So they're figuring it out and one thing that you can do is just look up tons of furniture on Etsy that has been painted and restyled and re like really invest time in researching and reading and you will learn a lot of information by doing that type of legwork. And so that was very helpful for me. Um, next is how do, when do we pay the shipper? So when you use Uship, you will like it. if your customer orders your friend the customer orders the furniture let's say the furniture is going from wisconsin to texas you have once then um you contact the customer and say you know can you please send me your phone number because i'm going to need your phone number to arrange shipping so make sure you get their phone number right away i even have started putting that in my listings like you know if you make a purchase like please contact me immediately with your phone number um, and so that will help shipping to go a lot more smoothly for you. And so that you will get the customer's phone number. You will go ahead and list it on you ship. And so you'll put in where it's being picked up, where it's going to customer's number, your number, product information, fill out the you ship, um, fill out all the information as much as possible. Go ahead and put pictures in there. The more you can do, like re like take those things to heart, like on Uship, it'll say like, um, pieces get picked up for delivery more often when there's photos of them. Take that to photos of the items being shipped. Let people see what you're shipping. I've also found that I have more success in my items getting picked up on Uship when I put that we, like professionally package our own furniture. And so they know, I've had a shipper tell me like, you guys do the best job of anybody that's furniture that we've picked up. Um, and it, that gives them, uh, oh, they can breathe a bit more easily that the furniture on, that they're hauling is gonna be better protected. And so put as much information as you can. I will put, um, that we will have somebody help them load it if necessary and somebody on the receiving end to help them unload it. And I include that in my Etsy listings that it may be necessary to have somebody on hand to help a singer, single shipper unload an item of furniture. And the reason that, and most people are okay with that. 
the reason that I do that is, is that you can ship items quicker if you're choosing from a pool of, if you're open to a pool of shippers where it's two drivers or just one driver. But if you have to wait till two drivers are available because it's two people have to be there to load and unload the furniture, then it may take a little bit longer. So if you can take advantage of a single shipper who is available, but he needs help loading and unloading, you know, it could be more affordable for you to ship. Um, you're not paying for two people. And it also could be that you get your product, your inventory there to the customer in a much more timely manner. And so um, when the you pay you ship at the time that you order the booking, and so you order the booking on UShip, you pay UShip. UShip holds that kind of like an escrow account. Once the shipper delivers the furniture, he will text you or he'll put on Etsy, or not on Etsy, on the UShip app that he has delivered it. And then you confirm with your customer, did you receive your item? Is it in good shape? And um, once they confirm that, you release the payment from UShip and then the, the driver gets paid. When I, um, when I use private shippers and not through UShip, I never ever pay them. And they never ever ask to be paid until the furniture has been delivered. I, I would just say there's no reason to, like I would advise against paying a shipper until the furniture is delivered. Like hopefully you would not be put in a situation where a shipper is asking that, but I would heavily advise against it. I don't know a single reputable reputable shipper who has asked for money up front. And so, you know, please try to avoid that just for your own benefit. And so um, somebody else had asked, should the customer inspect the furniture with the shipper? Do you put that in your shop policies? Yes, the customer should always inspect the furniture. The shipper should stay around while the customer and help the customer un, even you know unload it or un, open it up, not unload, but open it up and um, and see like make sure that there's no damage and take pictures of it and whatnot. So, and any shipper worth his salt is going to stick around because and make sure that it has arrived in good condition and allow the customer to inspect it that really only takes a few minutes of his time. And then he's able to say, yes, I delivered this in good condition. How could he say that if he didn't stick around to see it unloaded? And so, except for maybe in very rare occasions, that should always happen. And you could put that in your shop policies. Um, I don't, I put it, like usually when I talk to my shippers and I talk to my customers, I can. It's really up to you. Like you could put it in your shop policies on Etsy. You could put it in your listing description. You could, you know, just message it to your customer and to your shipper, however you want to communicate it. But it is a good idea to communicate that. Um, to make sure, it's always good to make sure everybody's on your same page. You, the customer and the shipper. And when everybody is, things go a lot more smoothly and then somebody had said can you explain you ship and greyhound shipping so i think you ship has been pretty well explained i can come back and go through some different things on it on another video but i've explained all of the basics between the other videos i've done in this and then greyhound shipping um i'll just touch on it i don't use them because we're too far away but it's greyhound freight and that's where you would take your furniture that you package and you would put it on a Greyhound bus and it would go in their cargo area and it would ship from the station that you take it to that's close to you to the Greyhound station in your that's closest to your customer. And you would have to, you know, communicate with your customer, customer or put this in a listing, um, you know, to make sure like they know that's how it will be shipped. It is affordable. I mean, it is a, you know, if you were shipping something all the way across the United States, I would say that would prob probably be one of the more affordable ways to ship. I would just recommend that you would practice on packing it well and that you would like super well. You would want to use styrofoam corners and maybe even styrofoam board all the way around it. 
plus your bubble wrap and blanket wrap and your double perforated cardboard, you would want to take those extra steps because it's going in a cargo area, potentially with some other heavy things. And so you can ship it well, but make sure you fill out all the paperwork you're supposed to. And, you know, to like look at if it gives you an insurance option, option. Take that insurance, insurance. I don't know why I'm so like tongue tied today. Make sure you take that option. And so, and I will say most on you ship most of the time now, I am taking the insurance option as well. Unless my shipper assures me and shows me proof that he has all the items insured when he's hauling them and how much they're insured for. So there is that to consider. Um, and Greyhound will also, they can, in some places, Greyhound will take it straight to the customer's house, depending on, there's some addresses they don't go to, but that can be something you can look up. And so if you go to, I think it is greyhoundfreight.com, and if that's not it, you can just put into Google or whatever search engine that you use, Greyhound Freight, shipping furniture on Greyhound, it will come up. You can play with the dimensions just like you do on you ship what will give you an average price of what it is to send something and make sure you're always adding on a few more inches to your dimensions of your product to account for the size of the item packaged and boxed and so how do I weigh furniture was the last question. And I've covered that in other videos, but basically I started out weighing furniture by just Googling like, what is the average size of a large dresser? And you can even find printouts and stuff now, like if you look enough and it would, I think it, when I first looked it up, the average size of a large dresser, I wanna say it told me it was like around 250, 260 pounds. And so <clears throat> I ship armoires, some are lightweight, some are really heavy. And so I can know that, okay, moving this armoire is a lot heavier than moving, so say like this dresser back here. And so I know that um, if that dresser, that is the average size dresser too, is gonna be 250 pounds and my armoire is probably gonna be 350, 400 pounds. And so after you begin doing it for a while, you realize like, and you use some references that you can find online for average weights of furniture with its dimensions and you know, what, what it's made of. That's a helpful resource and you can get pretty accurate estimates. On that, I will say, if you're like, I don't know if this dresser weighs 300 pounds or 350 pounds, it's not gonna make a big difference at all. Like I've done that before where I'm like, gosh, I don't, if, it might weigh 350 pounds, but I don't want to drive the price on shipping way up. I noticed that when I would change a price by $50, it didn't hard, or the weight on a U-ship estimate, it didn't hardly change the price at all. So don't let that scare you. It's not so much a weight as it is getting into the size and, the dimensions of it. And so that is just something to keep in mind. So I wanted to let you know in the, just going back and touching on selling furniture and that you redesign or that maybe even your hand making and making a business out of it, beginning on Etsy, some encouragement. I've started mentoring some people and it's, um, beginning to become just kind of naturally beginning to become like a oh like a program and a paid program that I'm offering and so um just one of the things that I've been noticing with several people that I've been working with is that um taking time to really fill out your Etsy profile well to enter in every spot and I think this is like good practice all the way around with your listing descriptions, fill up all of the pictures. If like I'm starting to do videos now of them, you know, think about like everything that you could put in, fill in every spot, 
on my listing descriptions on my photos make sure you're showing the insides like i've seen people list um armoires and and dressers and all kinds of things but they don't show the inside at all and so you know the customer wants to see this because it's a pre-owned piece of furniture and when you open up the doors to something are they going to find something nice painted unpainted a big hole in it they want to see the condition of it and you know i've had customers tell me like they don't like that when they're not able to see in the beginning and they have to ask for those they're like we don't want to like have to come after and beg for these pictures we feel like that should be provided so let them see what some drawers look like inside open up doors to your cabinets and your hutches and let them see what that looks like inside go ahead and include that <coughs> excuse me either in your photo your listing photos or your descriptions let them know what the back is like is it painted is it unpainted and put in there that more photos are available on your descriptions you know if your items are pre-owned or vintage it's good to list that it's good to list that it may have slight imperfections or wear is consistent with age and use and if there's anything that's noticeable like a noticeable flaw or imperfection point those out to them um, just really it's being upfront with the customer and it's helping you and i have found it, the guy has not turned the customers off like they know what they're buying and they don't expect like a new factory piece you know to be buying a factory piece on your etsy shop if you create one or if you have one fill out your banner area fill out profile information let people see a photo of you or you know some logos a lot of times people like connecting let them connect to a instagram page where your work is displayed my customers have told me like we love going to your website and seeing what you've done and one um Oh, a film producer told me, and she just bought an armoire for me and a custom order. And she's like, I love what you've done on your website, like all the things. And she was pulling from my website, like I want an aspect of this furniture and an aspect of that that you did. So they get to see your previous work and maybe have a website or maybe you're like, I'm nowhere ready for that. That's okay. That's all right. But you can have an Instagram, a Facebook, oh, maybe a Pinterest where you connect your pictures and what you've done, other ways for people to connect with you. Maybe it's a LinkedIn. They wanna, the more ways you offer for customers to connect with you, the more confident they're gonna feel about being able to reach you, about being able to um, look at your work as an artist, the more just, connection they have the more confidence they have in you and so I definitely recommend filling out ways for them to connect with you and so that could be website your social media LinkedIn etc and then um, fill in like let them know how did you get started in this business what type of furniture is your specialty furniture can they contact you for custom orders do you welcome that that type of thing you may consider filling out a sheet that's like a Google Doc of how a custom order, order will work. And when customers connect with you, you're like, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Here's a link where you can read the basics of how a custom order works with me. And then if you want to um, view this and then get back with me um, and talk about it more, I would love to talk about the specifics and or we could just chat here or you could call me. So really like making ways available for them to have information, whether it's through Etsy messaging. Some people like to just read a Google doc file and just decide on their own. Some people wanna text you. Some people wanna have a phone call with you. And so setting those things up, it's really good business practice. Filling in all the spaces that Etsy gives you to fill in about your business as an artist, those things are good. Building up your shop, your Etsy shop by adding more listings, those things are good. Even if it's listings like 
some smalls. If you like to go, I mean, I, I'm not listing this. This is just like a base that's here. But if you like to go um, thrifting and maybe you find some wooden or brass candlesticks or something and you would paint those and those could be some smalls that you could ship through USPS and list. That's building up your shop. Then somebody might be looking for farmhouse candlesticks come to your site, see that, and like, oh, wow, she's got a farmhouse dresser, too, and a table, and so that's more people that would begin following your shop, more people seeing um, the products that you have, and so if you could get 10 or more items on your shop and keep building from there, that can be very, very helpful. We will get into more of this information later. Um, if you are interested in the mentoring program, feel free to email me at Casey at mountaincovehomeandfamily.com and I can send you some information about it. It really is um, just one-on-one -on -one mentoring through phone calls and emails on how to build your Etsy business, how to tackle some things to begin shipping. And so it, it's pretty in depth. So one person would even needed to cover like some, um, how do I get over, not just one, but a few, like how do we get over these other struggles so we can really work on our business. And so just for, if I can share my experience with you and if you feel like that mentorship could benefit you, then feel free to email me and I would love to connect with you that way and help you take this to the next step. And lastly, I want to leave this with you as a word of encouragement. Okay, you guys, I hope that it changes, but lumber prices are crazy high right now. Insane high. And so that people, that is going to affect the building of new furniture and building of new just about anything. So more people are going to be buying high quality pre-owned vintage used furniture and so redesigned furniture this is probably going to escalate quite a bit and some people are gonna love the experience and keep doing it and being repeat customers so if you've been wondering like i want to take the step now is the time to take the step because a lot of people are going to be buying pre-owned because it, it's too much like there's just not the lumber available and then the expense of it is just skyrocketed to make buying brand new really feasible for a lot of people and a lot of people are really turning to vintage customized things so I am going to try to get on here next week and to go through some more business stuff with you but I hope this has been helpful thank you for tuning in with me if this has been um enjoyable or beneficial to you would you please consider liking and subscribing and i will strive hard to bring you some content that is high quality and useful for you i hope you have an absolutely great day and thanks for spending this time with me